Newsmaker Sunday with Fox 10's John Hook. Thanks for joining us this week on Newsmaker Sunday. As we look at tape of the Fort Hood shooter, Major Nadal Malik Hassan, charged now with 13 counts of premeditated murder in last week's shooting rampage at Fort Hood. Of the 13 people who were killed, four were officers, eight were enlisted soldiers, one was a civilian. We now know that he jumped up in the middle of this room before he opened fire, shouting out, Alu Akbar, God is great, in Arabic, as he mowed down his fellow soldiers. What would possess a Muslim to do this? And furthermore, while everybody was trying to make sense of what happened, many people were ignoring the obvious, that this was an Islamic extremist who carried out with deadly intentions his passions uh, uh, against serving in the military, his passions against serving overseas in Iraq or Afghanistan, and the media simply ignored it to a great degree and tried to make up excuses for this guy when really the obvious was right before our eyes. Our guest this week on Newsmaker Sunday is Dr. Zudi Jasser, who is the head and founder of Islamic Forum for Democracy. And he is one of the few Muslim voices who have spoken out strongly against Islamic extremism. Thanks for being with us. It's nice to be with you again. I, I have to say, I've gone to the well with you quite a bit. I've had mm -hmm. you on the program several times. I had you on the radio program earlier this week. But I think we need some sanity in this debate. Why is it that, and I guess part of it, David Brooks in the New York Times made a great point in his column this week that it's an admirable quality that Americans don't want to rush to judgment and they don't want to paint Muslims as extremists because that's negative, that's not a good thing. But when you see extremism, to not call it extremism, as journalists, we're not doing our job. Yeah, you know, I, I can't, we can't underscore that enough, not only as journalists, but as a country. If we are going to treat the disease, you have to be able to diagnose it. In medicine, you know, my, my main job is as a physician. And if you miss the symptoms and all, you, and all you do is focus on the symptoms and you don't look at the causes of the disease, you're going to miss it completely. And yes, we can't blanketly say that it's all Islam or all Muslims because actually then you're alienating the exact group that you need to treat it. It's Muslims. This is an Islamic problem and it needs an Islamic solution. And if we are going to, what happens is when the media and the government just dismisses it and says that, well, jihad is this inner, inner struggle or Islam is a peaceful religion. Yes, my Islam is a peaceful religion. But what about Hassan's Islam? What, what, how did he fall down the slippery slope? And the only way we're going to make a national strategy of counter-radicalization to begin a national agenda to fight that is if we figure out what we're fighting. And, to, and what happens is right now, people say, well, where are the moderate voices in Islam? Where are the Muslims speaking up? Well, when you dismiss it, you give them a pass. But if you start to say, you know what? Here's a guy that was quoting from your Quran. Here's a guy that was handing out the same Qurans that I read. How is it that he had a different formulation? Show us how you have a different interpretation. Because this is an Islam that's threatening us. Yes, it is political Islam. I think it needs to be reformed by the way our organization looks at it, which is the separation of mosque and state. But that process is going to need a maturation, is going to need education and an intellectual war of ideas. You knew early on exactly what this was all about. You could spot it a mile away. You said it on Monday on the radio program. You said, look, <laughs> let's call it what it is. Mm -hmm. This guy's an extremist. This is a jihadist. It, it, uh, you know, you see the, the video footage of him walking into the 7-Eleven in his quote-unquote fundamentalist or, or Salafi uh, uh, garb, and you realize this is a gentleman that was falling down a slope of radicalization. I mean, the NYPD had a report in 2007. I'd ask people to go look at it. It talks about the steps in radicalization. Almost every Islamist group in Washington protested it and said, well, it paints Muslims with a broad brush, etc. Well, th I've never seen a radical uh, uh, attack done by a secular Muslim that separates mosque and state. It always comes from this group of Muslims that believe in the political state of, of, of uh, Islam. And this guy was hanging out, um, you know, and corresponding with a, a real extremist. Uh, this this uh, Imam, uh, Imam, exactly, mm -hmm. who praised his attack after it happened over his website. We, we've got issues here. We've got issues here. Even if you look at this Imam. 
He started back in uh, he uh, ten years right ago. Into the hijackers he from 9/11, and he used to be at the largest uh, uh, mosque in North Virginia, at Dar al Hijra Mosque, which uh, now put out a statement against him. But this gentleman also has had a radicalization of his own. He started as a fundamentalist Wahhabi and just became milit much, much more militant and became an Al Qaeda imam. But the bottom line is, is that we have to identify the commonalities of thought and figure out how to treat that so that individuals that are attracted by this identity, this separatism that is an Islamic identity, we as Muslims can start, start to treat as an American treatment for a Muslim problem. Let me uh, read, and this will be uh, still number 500. This is from the Arab News. This is the Arab News take on it. Um, read the quote here if we can. When it was first reported uh, that the Fort Hood attacker had an Arab name, do we have the uh, still? This would be the first still from the Arab News. See if we can pull it up. Here it is. When it was first reported that the Fort Hood attacker had an Arab name, the persecution of his religion began. The lesson here is that when a white American Christian goes berserk, all that's required to justify his actions is mounting domestic pressure. But should a Muslim open fire indiscriminately, it is his religion that is always culprit number one. Do they have a point? Absolutely not. I mean, look at your source there. The Arab News is a Saudi English arm of propaganda and what they're doing is they want to avoid the treatment of the problem why because to treat this problem the Saudi government that that pays for that newspaper would have to deal with the fact that they are one of the primary cancers in the world of distributing Wahhabi ideology Quranic translations that influence and end up causing the slippery slope that people like Dr. Hassan people like that Imam Awlaki go down and they don't have a point Christian Christian uh, uh, um, acts, for example, with the abortion clinics happen once in a decade, and even if they do, it's not a pattern of radicalism. Since uh, uh, the Christian world separated uh, church and state and rendered under Caesar what is Caesar and unto God's what is God's, we've been blessed in living in a world that creates countries like America where we are free, blind to religion, and that process has not happened under regimes like the Saudi regime that's trying to peddle this information. As, as we interviewed you, Fox 10 interviewed you Friday afternoon. As a Muslim, you were heartbroken as you learned more about uh, Major Hassan, that a fellow Muslim had turned on his fellow soldiers. You served 12 years in the Navy. Yeah. You've served this country. You're a Muslim. Your parents are from uh, Syria. Syria. You said you were heartbroken by it. How, how are we, the rest of us who are not Muslim, supposed to figure out who's with us and who's against us? All I can say is if, if there's any repetition in history is how did the revolutionary uh, Americans figure out who was with the Church of England or, or the Crown and who was with America. Um, there's a revolution going on in the Muslim world and the, those of us that believe in our faith, believe in God, the God of Abraham, and want our children to grow up as pious Muslims, but believe in a constitution where we are Americans first, Americans that happen to be Muslim, and not Muslims that demand to be American. And I think that that separation, that conflict, where we can say that our loyalty is primarily to a, a country like America needs to be vetted, needs to be discussed nationally, not in a McCarthyist fashion, but in a, in a diagnostic, in a treatment fashion, so that we can start to treat this separatism where Muslim youth or Muslim young adults start going down the path where they feel that the West is their enemy rather than their closest friend that has defended the rights of Muslims. Now when